Hello and welcome to this month's drawing tutorial. This month we're going to go back to a tighter realism in drawing. So when you want to work really tight and realistic, the best way to ensure your success is to make a graph. So the first thing I've done here is I've taken my reference material, I've taped it onto a piece of paper, and I cropped in the sides until I had the composition that I wanted. Then by measuring I found an outer graph to the picture that has eight segments. Then I did the same thing on the side here. Then in order to make sure that that graph is useful, you have to make sure that your drawing material is going to follow the same exact dimensions. So on the original, my sides are 4.5 by 4 inches. When I translate those to my drawing paper, I come up with a rectangle that's 9 inches by 8 inches. Then I translated the exact same eight marks from the reference material to the drawing paper. So let's place her head here. I see that the top of the head is at D and the bottom of the head is at the halfway point. So I'll make a line that gives me about that right length. If I take a straight edge and come in, the first thing that I hit is this point right here, which lines up almost perfectly with C. And on this axis it would be C2. So here I'll come over to C2, give myself a little bit of a reference. The chin is at D4, I already have that. The nose is at 3 and almost D, but not quite. So then you can start to sort of connect those and sketch out the outside shape of the head just like this. So there's the top of the head about where it should be. So now I'm filling in this tilt of the face a little bit and I can speed up a little bit now when I know some of the major lines and this is what I mean by starting to use the drawing itself as the reference. But let me go off camera now so that you don't fall asleep and we'll come back when it's ready to start shading. Now after taking a few hours and using my graph to lay down these large shapes, this is the outline that I've come up with. Now there are a few elements that make this drawing especially tricky. There are flowers in the foreground that are lying over her skin and there are these really bright light flyaway hairs and this halo around her face and behind her face right here. And we want to protect those lights in our drawing. And the best way to do that is to use a stylus and some frisket film. This is frisket film. So first of all, I'll show you how to use the stylus. What I'm basically doing here is indenting the paper so that when I start to lay down my graphite, it's going to skip right over the top. And I'll be left with some bright white highlight lines. So take your time, be careful, and be certain of the lines that you indent. Now for the flower, I have to make sure that the flower is dark enough that I can see through the sticky frisket paper. Then outline on the paper, carefully cut those out, and stick them down. Now you can see the stickers that I placed down that protect the flowers. You won't be able to see the lines that I scratched in with my stylus until I go over the top with graphite. But now I am ready to start laying in the tone. Now when you start laying in the tone, you need to always be aware of the shapes of the shadows and the highlights. There's a shadow shape that goes all the way over her hair here and that extends clear down into her face and arm. So see that as one big shadow shape and put it down as one large shape. And right now I'm just concentrating on that base tone of the flesh tone and the color of the hair. I'm avoiding the highlights but I'm not worried about any of the details. The ponytail melds into the shirt which melds into the arm. And here you can see how I go right over the top of that flower. Thanks, mask it film, because now I don't have to worry about outlining that flower. I'm going into the hand, 
and you see how this is still an extension of that same large shadow shape. So that's fantastic. Now I need to blend that tone nice and smooth. My favorite way for doing that, especially on an initial pass, is by using a chamois cloth. I'm just going to kind of smear everything together here with my chamois cloth. Smear, smear, smear. And now I'm ready to go at it again, darken up that tone in places, and do a finer job of blending with the Stomper Tortillon. So I'll go back and do the exact same thing a second time. And I've already seen me do this once, so let me do it off camera, and I'll come back and blend with a Stomper Tortillon. So when I'm blending with a stomp, sometimes I use small circle strokes like this and very light pressure. And for darker areas, I'm going to use more pressure and I might start to follow the line of the thing that I'm shading. For details on the face though, and just the skin tone of the face, I'm going to use those gentle circle strokes and just work on making a nice, smooth skin tone. Then I'm going to come back and show you how to pick out some details. After blending with the tortillon, the skin is darker and smooth. So now I'm ready to start adding some of the details of the features. So I'm just going to use a HB pencil and sharpen up some of these lines. I'm adding the darks, actually, more than sharpening lines. Remember, there are no lines on the face. There are just areas of sharp contours that give the appearance of lines. Darken up an edge, and then blend out one side. So you get a nice, clear, clean distinction between two different contours, but it doesn't look outlined. And I don't want to start by going as dark as I can I want to be able to erase mistakes if I make a mistake. So you start with an HB and don't press very hard when you're first adding the shadows. Then as you finish that layer, you can go back a second time and a third time and darken up your darkest areas with softer pencils like 4Bs and 6Bs. Now I'm not done with the face, but I'll show you how I would go about finishing up the hair. Again, the tone is in place for the most part, so I just need to add a few dark strands here and there. And I can also, since I have tone on the paper, erase out some light hairs. As long as they're thick, the kneaded eraser pulls them out really nicely, see? So finishing up the hair is just going to be a slow process of give and take, positives and negatives. Now in the background, I'm looking for the shapes of the shadows and then I'll put them in with a nice dark pencil. And if I want the edge of my paper to be really sharp, I can tape that. Masking tape comes up nice and clean. It doesn't tear the paper. And then you're just going to put down your tone. And then once that is down, I can use my stomp if I want to and smooth it or I can keep it rough. So I'm going to go ahead and push forward now that I've shown you how to add some detail to the features. I'm going to finish up the figure and I'll come back to show you how to work on the foreground elements. To put in those grasses, I'm going to use a nice sharp HB pencil and I'm going to work on defining some of them with line and relying on that indented line to help define others. So hopefully here you can see those indented lines popping out. The more tone I put over the top, the brighter these lines are going to appear. See this is kind of a scribbly light area. So I'm going to squint at it, hold my reference material nice and close to the paper. I'm just creating a broken pattern that will read as foliage because I'll have some right here that are highly defined. I'm just squinting at that paper, squinting at my reference material, looking for some shapes. Okay, so let me take this area off camera, fill in the foreground here, 
And I'll also show you what I'm going to do in the background, which is these grasses. I'll get some tone on the paper in places like this, blend that smooth, so I get an area sort of toned down. And once I have tone on the paper, I can use my kneaded eraser and then erase out a few blades of grass here and there. And then I can emphasize some of those blades of grass by just darkening one side and then using a stomp to smooth that out. So yes, it is going to take some time, but again, don't drive yourself crazy by trying to put in every single blade of grass. Just put in enough so that you give the impression and then stop. And remember the rule of thumb, it is better to underwork than to overwork. So err on the side of fewer details, relying on the eye to fill those in, okay? So I'm going to take a few hours now, finish this up, and I'll come back and show you what I end up with. All right, here is the drawing after doing some work in the foreground and putting in that gray base in the midground. Now, if this were a commissioned piece and I wanted it to be absolutely as good as I could make it, I would put it away for at least a day, come back to it with fresh eyes, and then make adjustments. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'll say that I am done and I'm going to peel up the little areas that I protected with frisket film. Of course I can't leave them like this so they don't look like flowers. I need to add a little bit of detail like the center of the flower some detail to some petals and of course blend it so I'll call that good on the flowers peel off my tape border and then I will see for the first time how it would look with nice clean edges now this is the finished piece after removing the tape so you can see that by preserving your whites, either by working around them, indenting them into the paper with a stylus beforehand, or preserving them with frisket film, you get really nice professional results in a light struck figure. And depending on the amount of time you put into it, your results are going to be really nice and professional as well. So just take your time at every level of the process, focusing on making your drawing the best that you can make it, and I'm sure that you'll be pleased with what you come up with. So that concludes this month's drawing tutorial. I hope you've learned some things that you can take back to your own studio to improve your results, and I thank you so much for watching.